as a Scarlet at, at home as a Scarlet Knight. Big win for Richie Lewis. And Rutgers draws a little closer. It's 17 to 6. Richie Lewis, by the way, goes to 12 and 3 on the year. And that's his eighth straight win. He's won eight consecutive bouts. So he is on fire at the right time of the year. Yes, he is. Especially like we mentioned, the Scarlet Knights only have two more dual matches before they head into the Big Ten tournament. And like we said, momentum before those type of tournaments is huge. And having these big matches, having these big wins is what gives them the edge on these tournaments because it, it brings them into those tournaments feeling good, feeling ready, feeling confident. And feeling confident in a sport like this is key. 174 pounds here, Chris Farr, senior out of Lesseur, Minnesota, 12 and 10 on the year for the Golden Gophers. And Joe Grello for the Scarlet Knights, 12 and seven. Redshirt freshman out of Bergen Catholic, a two-time New Jersey State champion for the Crusaders. And uh, in high school, his senior year, he was ranked seventh in the nation as far as high school wrestlers. So a tremendous recruit for Scott Goodale and Grello. Here trying to keep the momentum going for the Scarlet Knights. And a nice move by Grello. Crowd is on its feet again. Two Grello points for Grello. Locked in that cradle right to the back. And early six points, four near fall points. Wow, way to take him right to his back and lock that in tight. Crowd was looking for a fall. Scott Goodell was looking for the fall. They thought he had it, but Rep did not think that both shoulders were on the mat. But man, he was close, and that would have put Rutgers, would have just brought them right back into this match. What a start for Grello as he's up 6 nothing. A minute 16 remaining in the first period. And the big screen here inside the rack is showing a replay of, of that near fall. And man, they wanted a pin there, but it looked like the ref, the ref just did, didn't see the fall, so he gave him four near fall points which gave Grillo an early lead in this match. Grillo really the aggressor here in this match. He is. And it looked like in, in that first takedown that Parr was, Parr was going for the takedown, but it looked like Grillo had just caught him. Parr got caught up. Grillo had his hands locked in right and was able to put him right onto his back. seconds left in the first period. Riding time is up to a minute 15 in favor of Grello. And a point given to Farr for the escape. We finish period one with Grello on top, six to one. And there's that move again by Grello. Here he has got that cradle locked up tight, head, leg. And like we said, Farr's holding his leg because he was going for that single leg tank down there, but Grello was able to lock him up right at the perfect time. And he locked in his leg, got his head locked, and bang, right to the cradle, right onto his back for four near fall points. Farr did a great job fighting it off though. Rello's riding time is moving up already at a minute and 45 seconds. He was looking for another fall there. He had both legs locked in. Parr was able to fight that one off. Rello was able to turn Parr on his back there. He, he would have he been looking at a few more near fall points, if not the pin. Two points for Farr. So he creeps back in here, six to three. Yeah, sometimes when a wrestler can give up six back points like that, or six points like that, right off the start of the match, sometimes it's just discouraging and it gets him down. But it looks like Parr is not letting that get to him. He knows he just 
happened to get caught. And that doesn't mean that he's out of this match. He got caught and he believes he's able to fight his way back through and we see him being offensive and being aggressive and he was able to get the reversal there. One minute left in period two. And both wrestlers out of the circle. Now if you saw, Parr had that leg locked in, so Ruff started counting for stall calls, but then Parr actually pushed Grello out of the mat. He took a big step, which put Grello out of the mat, and because he pushed another wrestler outside of the circle, he, he automatically gets a stall call. And a point on the escape for Grello. He's up seven to three. And that throw that we had, Parr was looking for there, that's the throw that we saw from DeLuca. He locks up both arms, he goes to fake the trip, and he goes to throw the wrestler over the outside of his body. But he, Grello saw it coming, he fought it off, so he wasn't able to get that throw in. But as soon as you see those bare locks get in, when you see the wrestler get underneath both arms, underneath those armpits, you can expect you're looking for a throw there. Final five seconds of period two. Parr's, Parr was looking to, to tilt Grello back to look for some near fall points there. He believed he had him, but he believed he had control and he was tilting back and putting him on his back for some near fall points, but Ref didn't give any type of control, so Ref wasn't counting any near fall points, and no points were awarded there. Well, he's motioning to his head coach, Brandon Egham, but Coach Egham says no. Right, and that motion is him tilting back, because he knows he had locked in, and he was on top, and he was tilting back, hoping to get Grillo enough on his back that the Ref start calling some near fall points, but the Ref didn't see any control, so the Ref didn't call the points. And there's a point for the escape, eight to three, Grello. Minute and a half remaining. Mentioned head coach Brandon Egham of Minnesota. Rookie of the year last year, rookie head coach of the year. And you can tell Parr is wrestling with a bit of a chip on his shoulder now. He really believed that he had Grello in control with some near fall points. And you can tell it made him angry and it made him more aggressive and he was able to just get two takedown points because of it. And now he has Grello up with another single leg. And if he can get behind him here, it's gonna be two points. But Grello did a great job defending off that shot. Final 58 seconds remaining here. In this third period, it's a 9-6 match right now. And the ref just called a stall, another stall call on Grello, which gave Parr another point because you saw Grello actually back out of the mat. And again, like I said, when a wrestler is pushed out of a mat and when a wrestler is stepping backwards and leaves the circle, that's a stall call. So the ref went right ahead and called that as soon as he saw Grello backing up out of the circle. Grello has a minute 23 in riding time, so he'll get another point here. So he's essentially up 10 to six. Oh, and another point now the, awarded to Farr. Yeah, Farr went, oh, wow, now the ref went right ahead and gave him that stall call. And at first I didn't think he was given that two point takedown, but he did, the ref, Grello was able to get fully behind him for the two point take, takedown as soon after he was get awarded a stall call, which is interesting because some people will say, he was moving, he was going for the takedown. Why did the ref just call that stall call? But again, all he was really doing was standing there and it was Parr going for the shot, so he called the stall. Well, Grello wins it. And again, the crowd rises to its feet here at the Rutgers Athletic Center. Joe Grello, his 13th victory of the season. And he draws Rutgers a little bit closer.